everyone, this is Rebecca Kokendurfer with homeschool.com. Are you ready for a story time? I love our story time time together. I enjoy so much meeting your kids and thank you for letting me read to them and be a part of your life. I enjoy it so much. As you come on to the, um, the live, the storybook time here, uh, please say hi. You know, write something in the comment field. Uh, maybe uh, let me know the name of your child or, or children who are with you so that I can give them a video shout out. That's always really fun to have somebody from the TV screen actually calling their name and saying hi. Uh, so today, um, the, I found a great book for us to talk about. It's called How Full Is Your Bucket? But before we start that, you know how I love uh, homeschooling t-shirts? So I have another one for you to take a look at. It's called, can you see what it says? Home plus school, they're better together. I love this. And this is part of uh, homeschool.com's 20th anniversary celebration this year. So I uh, picked up this t-shirt when I was speaking in Cincinnati last month. And by the way, if you live in Cincinnati or that Kentucky area, I must say the nicest people on the planet. I enjoyed my time so very much. So thank you so much for welcoming me there. And hopefully we had a chance to visit at the homeschool.com booth or during the workshop. Um, my next time speaking is going to be in Southern California in June. So if you get a chance to go to that homeschooling conference, oh boy, I would really enjoy that. I, I would enjoy meeting you. So here's the idea of how full is your bucket. Uh, as many of you know, last month was Autism Awareness Month. And I have a son who is differently abled. He is uh, legally blind and he's also on the autism spectrum. So I, I'm probably particularly sensitive to people who are differently abled. And I really love that word because I see with my own son too that he is very abled. Just in some instances, it shows up differently. And it got me thinking of a... A, it's like a parable or a metaphor that I had read recently, and you might have heard of it too, and it's called the dipper and the bucket. And here is the big idea of this, and I think it really is a big idea. And the idea is that we have this, this bucket in us, and we also have a dipper. And the idea is that when we say something kind to someone else, or we smile at them, or we do a random act of kindness, it's as if our dipper has added something to their bucket. And when we add to their bucket, it also fills up our own bucket. And also, if we do something that is unkind, if we say something that is unkind or impatient, it's as if we're taking a dipper from their bucket and magically a dipper also is removed from our own bucket. And I think that this is a really beautiful, easy way to explain, you know, so the selfishness beside, behind kindness, right? And why we know from our own experience that when we do something for someone else, it makes us feel better. And when we are unkind to someone else, it makes us feel less. So I ordered this book for us for a story time today because I think that this kind of helps illustrate that idea too, that we all have a dipper and a bucket. And every day, every kind of moment of the day is a choice on are we going to add something to somebody's bucket or are we going to take away from their bucket? And when when you know from your own example that your own experience that when your bucket is full, you are happier, you're lighter, you're kinder, you're able to be a better, you know, a better mother, father, friend, spouse, sister, brother. But when your bucket is empty, sometimes you're just in survival mode and it's much harder for you to to 
be your best person. So I think we always want to make sure that we are making the choice and creating the habit of filling up other people's buckets. And while doing that, we get to enjoy the feeling of our own bucket being filled. So remember, I can see that some people are coming in on the live, please. Uh, please give me a thumbs up so I know you're there or write something in the comments section because I love saying hi to you and being there live time with you. So let's start reading. Uh, How full is your bucket? This is the uh, version for kids. And this is by, I want to make sure I can get this centered for you. This is by uh, Tom Rath and Mary Reckmeyer. Okay, first page. Hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your story time. You can color while we read. Have, have a good time. Okay, so here is a brother and a sister, and the brother is a building up a tall tower of blocks, and his annoying little sister comes up. It says, Felix was putting one of the last blocks on his tower when his little sister came in. I want to build with you, she said. Felix scowled. Go away, you're too little. And she said, I'm big. And he said, stay back, you'll knock it over. I am, I'll be very careful. Go play with your baby toys. So unkindness, right? So you can see that here she's angry and out of anger, kind of out of an empty bucket, she thwack, she knocked over her brother's tower. And of course we have all done that. We've all received that and we've all done that. And then they both called Grandpa. So Grandpa shook his head. Felix, you just dipped from your sister's bucket. Like everyone else, Anna has an invisible bucket. When it's empty, she feels bad. But when it's full, she feels great. Didn't you ever notice your own bucket? There they are with their grandpa. But the next morning when Felix woke up, there it was, a small gray bucket floating over his head. When Felix, <laughs> when Felix came down to have breakfast, his mom was in a hurry. I've got a meeting this morning and it's almost time to go. Anna, sit still. Okay, so the mom's in a hurry. She's not intending to be impatient or unkind, but I think we're gonna see that she probably also empties from the kid's bucket. Um, Felix uh, slipped and choco wheats scattered on the floor. Felix yelled his mom, you should have used the stool to reach that. Felix could feel his bucket tip and big invisible drips spilt out. Drip, drip. <laughs> Let's take a look at this picture. It's so funny. It's his sister with a little mean, spiteful look on her face, stomping on the, the little choco weedies or whatever they are, <laughs> enjoying, enjoying her brother's distress. That never happens in real life. And then the dog Buster uh, jumped up and grabbed the muffin from Felix's hand. So that, you know, was like a dipper, a drip from his bucket. And then he got onto the school bus and the kids said, Hey, look at Felix's new backpack. My baby brother has one just like it. So they said something unkind and that took water out of his bucket. And then it was, he was walking down the hallway and he saw some kids and they appeared to be talking about him behind his back. So that took from his bucket. And then someone knocked into him and said, watch out shrimp. So notice how he, when he woke up, he noticed his bucket. He started with the full bucket, but all this stuff happening, you know, spilling his cereal, getting yelled at by his mom, um, his sister <laughs> enjoying his distress, um, you know, the dog even eating his muffin. It's all making his bucket lower and lower and lower. 
And so this was, it's still only morning. And look at Felix's face there. Can you see that? And can you see the bucket over his head and how there's only just a little bit in that bucket now? Because he's had one of those bucket emptying mornings, which we all have. Okay, so he's sitting there in class. He's sad, he's grumpy. But then as he watched his classmates walk into the room, he secretly hoped they would trip and fall. Uh-oh. So his he has an empty bucket, so it's harder to have happy thoughts when you're on empty, right? It's harder for you to be kind. And that's what it feels like when you have an empty bucket. Kind of grumpy, kind of sad, kind of angry, not hoping for the best. But let's see what happens next. Felix slumped into his seat and waited and waited um, for something else bad to happen. Uh, Mrs. Bumbernickel walked slowly up to his desk and handed him a paper. He could hardly um, look. And she said, Felix, you wrote a wonderful story. Would you please share it with the class? And so he thought it was going to be something bad, but that was a positive thing. So you can see right here that it adds a drip into his bucket. And then he uh, read his story to the class and everyone really liked it and they clapped at the end. And so that put a whole bunch more drops, positive drops into his bucket. And then when he was um, out on the playground, the teacher said, oh, Felix, I want you to be captain today. You're such a good captain. She said something nice that put um, drops into his bucket. And then the art teacher said, oh, well done, Felix. I really like what you've done with your art. That added to his bucket. And then a nice girl at the school said, oh, cool backpack. I really like your backpack. So that started filling up his bucket. So by, this, by the afternoon, his bucket was full. And you can look at this too. You can see the kids there. I'm gonna put that up nice and close. You can see how full each person's bucket is. You know, and isn't that true too in life? Some people, you can kind of tell that their bucket is pretty full. And some people we just sense, we just kind of know that maybe they're running on an empty bucket. And that's a pretty uncomfortable place to be, isn't it? And so because he had a full bucket, Look at that. He was able to help someone who had dropped something. He was able to do a good deed. And then he was able to um, say, say something nice to a friend of his. He was able to say, here's your baseball catch, which put a positive bucket in the friend's bucket, but it also added one to him. Because, you know, as we know, when we do something good for someone else, it makes us feel good too. So the strange thing was, <laughs> is that um, every drop that helped that he helped put into someone else's bucket he felt another drop in his own bucket so then he came back home and he had a full bucket so whether you know you're at school or you're going to church or you're running errands or you're homeschooling you know, pay attention to how full your bucket is. And when your bucket is full, look at the little sister. It looks like she has not had the greatest day. And because she hasn't had the greatest day, it looks like the grandpa and even the dog, <laughs> their buckets are pretty empty too. So from his place of love and kindness and a full heart, he was able to go and hug his sister and let her build blocks with him. And then that filled up um, her bucket too. So that's the story of how full is your bucket for kids? And so I thought you might really like that. I ordered my copy from um, Amazon and I just think it's such a nice discussion point, isn't it? Because I mean, think about it. Do you know of someone and, and you know, kids, I'm talking to you here too. You know, you are, probably have really big hearts and children sometimes have these 
you know, special powers, special sensitivities that you can just kind of tell how someone is doing. So maybe you keep making that choice and you use your, your special power, your special kindness for good. So maybe, especially if you can tell during this kind of special needs, this differently abled month, um, you know, does somebody need an extra smile from you? If they drop something, do you help them pick it up? If they lose something, can you help them find it? Can you do some, some extra good deeds around the house or for people, knowing that every time you do, you fill up their bucket and you fill up your own too. And it just, wouldn't the world be a better place if we all had full buckets? You know, if we were just kind of aware of that, what a difference it would make in our home, with our brothers and sisters, with our parents. Just that little extra kindness of filling up other people's buckets. And also, of course, taking very good care of ourselves when we can tell that our own bucket is empty. Maybe that's when you need to do some self-care on your own to color a picture or to read a book for a while or to go out in nature for a little bit. Those are also good ways of filling up your bucket. Oh, I saw the heart across the screen. Thank you so much. And Melissa, I'm gonna get it really close here so that I can read it. Oh, thank you. Yes, I think it's a sweet story too. It's, um, is it a metaphor? Is it an allegory? Is it a parable? Is it a poem? But I love it. So guys, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so what is, so Melissa, what is the name of your your child who's there or are you watching it am i reading to you melissa <laughs> very happy to but if you want write in the name of uh, your your son or daughter who is watching this the story time so i can say hi to them and i do and i think this too think speaking of kindness i love homeschooling because i think it is such a kind place i do believe that home and school. I think that they are so good together. Hi, you guys. Oh, is that Kylie? Your eight-year-old. Hi, Kylie. And hi, Sandra. And that's hi from... Uh-oh. I, I, <laughs> it's really tiny print, you guys. If I get up too close, you, you look right up my nose. It's just not pretty. <laughs> so, Sandra, I see, too, you have... Oh, is that Darwin? Darlin? Um, well, hello there. I'm saying hi to you. Sorry for massacring your name. Hi, you guys. I'm so glad you're here. So enjoy your special home and school together where you get to look out for each other and, you know, fill each other's buckets and other people's buckets with kindness. Because I think that homeschooling is a great way to keep your bucket full because you love what you're doing. You love the people you're with. And maybe from that place, since you're so lucky to have the wonderful family that you have, the wonderful educational experience that you're having, your bucket is probably pretty full. So maybe from that full place, think about how you can maybe add some special drops and some, some ladlefuls to other people's buckets as well. I hope you've enjoyed this story time. I love being here with you. This is Rebecca Kokenderfer with homeschool.com and I'll talk with you next week. Bye everyone.